Hello everyone and welcome back. My name is Dustin Kreiss and today we finally get to do this game discussion. I'm so happy that I finally have this game finished because we're two days away from Xenoblade when I lose, you know, all semblance of a free life. And the game we're going to talk about today is Tales of the Abyss. Now, this is the third time I am shooting this video because every time I say the title of the series or the game, I always say Trails because I'm so used to talking about Trails in the Sky. So we're going to see if I make it through this one without saying Trails and talking about this game. But anyway, uh, Tales of the Abyss finally got it finished. Um, fantastically long game. And, you know, it, it's not a surprise. This is not a handheld game. So don't go into it thinking that you're only going to get like 20 to 30 hours of an RPG uh, from this game. You're going to get about 45 hours because this game was originally on the PS2. And uh, I really wish I would have got to this a lot sooner on the PS2 because uh, I've had this for, you know, a couple years. It's just been sitting over on the shelf. I didn't want to start it because I was trying to uh, sort of make my Tales of games last because I know that uh, Namco Bandai is really not all that excited about bringing them over here. And uh, so I really wanted to uh, not burn through them really fast. So, But now that I've finally experienced it on the 3DS, I can say that it is a fantastic game. And, uh, you know, Mr. RPG Crazy has always talked about how this is his favorite Tales of game. And I have to agree. Uh, this has knocked um, uh, Tales of Vesperia off the throne and is now my favorite Tales of game. Um, I just think uh, that the storyline is one of the best in the series, if not, if not the best. Uh, the gameplay is still top-notch Tales. Um... And I really liked having it on the go. Uh, I would have liked it just as much on this, but there was something nice about, you know, being able to carry this uh, big uh, RPG with me to work, you know, when I have some downtime at work to sort of sink into it. Uh, the only problem with it, and the only reason I would tell you to sort of seek out the PS2 version over this, um, is the 3DS's battery life. And... Essentially, uh, I don't like to play my my portable systems with them plugged in. Um, it's just it's it's just kind of a a nuisance because of course the uh, I I did it with this game and uh, you know what I had to do was basically get an extension cord and then get the actual 3DS cord and then I was able to you know kind of play it like it was still a portable system. But uh, when you get tied down to the wall, you might as well be playing on a console and. Uh, you know, with the 3DS, I got about an average, it's like three to five hours, so let's just say four for the sake of argument. And then you'd see that little red light come on, and you're like, oh, crap. So, um, you know, when I get the time to play these RPGs, I like to sink uh, quite a few hours into them, and that battery life just really, really kind of kills it a little bit. Um, the other big draw for the 3DS is, of course, the 3D in the game. I actually turned the 3D off because... It's not horrible, but this game was not designed. It was not built from the ground up for the 3DS. You know, it, it's kind of like um, I didn't go see the uh, the Phantom Menace in theaters when they just released it on the 3D. But that film was not filmed for 3D. It was it was after process for 3D, and I hear it didn't look very good at all. And that's kind of what I feel about this game. You know, it wasn't made for the 3DS, so it's not going to really take advantage of that. So. Plus, the 3D kind of draws off the battery a lot faster. So by turning the 3D off, uh, I was able to get a little bit more playtime with the battery life. But uh, other than that, uh, I really think you guys should definitely seek this game out. Um, it's getting hard to find. So expect to either you know be scouring GameStops for it to try to find you know just a retail copy. Or be prepared to pay some prices on eBay because I think the prices for this have already started to skyrocket a little bit. Um, so it can get pricey. So just be aware of that. I don't know if uh, Namco will do a reprint or not. Um, you know, these Tales of games, they kind of release them in low print runs. So you kind of got to get them at the beginning. And uh, otherwise you're going to be starting to pay out the butt. <laughs> so anyway, let's get into the game itself and let's talk about it a little bit. And uh, the story involves Luke von Fabra, who is the Duke of Kim Loska, and or the Duke's son, the son of the Duke of Kim Loska. And uh, 
10 years or no, seven years ago, he got kidnapped when he was like 10 years old. And um, ever since then, he's had amnesia. He can't remember his life prior to that. And the first part of the game sort of kind of deals with, you know, you know what happened to Luke and sort of the, the mystery of that. Enter one day, he's just kind of going to um, his sword lessons with Master Van, and all of a sudden this beautiful girl just pops out of nowhere and starts to attack his sword master, Van. And uh, through an interaction that uh, this girl and Luke have, it causes a hyper-resonance, and boom, they're teleported off to this uh, distant land. And there begins our storyline, which uh, I gotta be honest with you, in the first eight hours of this game, I had no fucking clue what was going on. Uh, Tales of Games love to throw a bunch of um, gibberish and techno babble at you, and it's really not until like the later parts of the game that you really understand everything that's going on. They start talking about phone slots, phone slot seals, phonomacry, um, you know, hymns and phonons and just all these and you know i had the same problem with vesperia i had the same problem to a point with eternia and the same problem a little bit with symphonia it's just that's the nature of the tales games they like to throw all this sort of techno babble at you and uh just start tossing the deep end and see if you can swim with all these words around but uh, eventually you you'll you'll get a sense for the world and you'll be able to figure out what's going on uh joining luke on his quest uh, of course, is that beautiful girl, Tear, who, um, she might be one of my favorite, uh, sort of heroines in, uh, an RPG in a long time, because, uh, I really like how tough she is, and, um, you know, she try, tries to be this stoic soldier, but every now and then, uh, through her, her interactions with Luke, who I will get to in a second, I forgot to talk about him, but through her interactions with Luke, uh, you really start to see some chinks in the armor and realize that, you know, beneath this sort of cold exterior is really a warm, loving person. And it, it's nice to see that sort of slow progression. And speaking of slow progressions, when you start this game, you are going to hate Luke with all your guts because he is a douchebag. Um, <laughs> there's really no other word to describe Luke in the beginning of the game. He's a spoiled brat. Uh, you know, he thinks everyone, everything should be handed to him. Everything should be easy. And through the course of the game, uh, you really do get a sense of growth with him. And it is really one of the, uh, the better character progressions in a video game that I've seen in a long, long time. Like, uh, Luke goes from being this spoiled brat to being this sort of noble hero by the end. And it's just, it's, it's really nice to see and it's really fun. Um, the other characters, you know, they, they sort of fall into their predictable patterns. You know, a princess with a secret past, a... Uh, military general from the opposite army, you know, uh, Luke's best friend from childhood who might have a, you know, hidden past, you know, that all that kind of stuff, you know. Uh, also, you know, that being it's a JRPG and a uh, Tales of game, there is a cute little monster creature that follows you around named Mew. Uh, and of course, he has one of those sickening uh, anime voices that just... It's like nails on a chalkboard every time they talk. But uh, eventually you'll get used to it, and it won't cause that much of a problem. But in the beginning of the game, I was like, oh, God. Like, I felt like Luke, and I just wanted to say, shut up, thing, you know, because it was just so grating. But um, storyline goes on for a very long time. Like I said, this I, my final clock on this game was 44 hours. So this is a hefty game, and there's a lot of story packed in there, especially when you factor in things like the skits and stuff like that. Um, I would prefer to have the skits voiced, like in Vesperia. And I, I, I can't remember, because I haven't played the PS2 version. I don't know if they're fully voiced in the PS2 version or not. But I really liked it when Vesperia, the characters, uh, actually talked. Uh, Vesperia had a really good voice cast, and so does this in a lot of respects. Although sometimes the voice acting, it, it sounds like a dude in a booth. You know, you kind of... It kind of has that weird um, microphone sound to it that um, Vesperia didn't have. So, uh, but as you move towards the end of the game, it really feels like the game tries to sort of pad out the ending a little bit. And that uh, you'll go to a place, you go to a dungeon, 
and solve the sort of the storyline problem there. And then they're like, well, we need to go back to this town and talk about things and figure out where we need to go next. And then you go back to that town and there was never there's never really a reason to go back to that town because everything they talk about in town, they could have just talked about right there and then left from there to go there. Or you could have chosen to go back to a town. But since the game forces you to sort of go back to Doth or Batacol, it, it, it kind of feels like it's padding things out a bit because then you have to move through like the castle and back through the town to get outside to get back to the Albacore. And uh, in a lot of respects... Um, uh, really towards the end, I was really jonesing to get to the end and finish it, and it's just like, oh, Christ, do I really have to go back to this town when we can just talk about these things here? Uh, so, you know, maybe a little bit more economy in the storyline would have been better, because I really do feel like parts of it went on a little bit too long. Uh, characters would sometimes repeat the same thing over and over again. Uh, there's a character named Ash who kind of looks like Luke, and uh, Luke and Ash have sort of a history together. But, you know, towards the end, when they would interact with each other, I was just like, Christ, you've been talking about, you, you've said the same things to each other for the last 20 hours. Can you guys move the conversation forward a little bit? But it's part of the character progression, and uh, it really does uh, add up to a very, very, very satisfying ending. Um, I really loved the story of Luke and Tyr, and especially sort of the, the last moments in the game right before the, the, the well, during the last cutscene between Luke and Tyr, it's really a, a nice little scene. And I won't ruin it for you because I really did enjoy the progression of their relationship. Um, get, getting into the gameplay itself, uh, standard Tales stuff. Uh, you know, you have your overworld, you have your towns, you have your skits, you have your action battle, uh, you know, real-time battle system like Star Ocean and other Tales games. They uh, mix it up a little bit. Uh, by dropping these, uh, when you when a character uses an art, it usually has an affinity to an element or something, and it drops like a circle for that uh, affinity to the element. And uh, I'm not exactly sure how the system worked because I didn't really invest a lot of uh, time into it because you don't really have to if you don't want to. You can play it just as a straight tales game with a attacks and arts and not have to worry about the whole. Um, I don't even know what it's called to be honest with you with the whole element system. But uh, if you use a certain art that has a certain affinity to an element in that circle, it'll power it up and soup it up. Um, I, don't, I can't remember if this is the first Tales of game to have the mystic arts in it. Uh, but uh, you'll definitely be pulling those out and dealing massive damage, especially in the final battle with Van. You... Oh, little spoiler there. Sorry, guys. <laughs> but you'll find out quickly enough. Um... But uh, you'll definitely want to be pulling out Mystic Arts and using a lot of items because he is a tough, tough, tough end boss. I had a, um, uh, you know, that's the first time I saw the game over screen was in the final battle. Um, it's not a terribly uh, difficult game. Uh, I felt like I died a lot more in the other Tales of games. So I don't know if I'm just getting better at Tales of or if this is just one of the easier games in the series. But uh, it wasn't until that final battle that I really, the first time I saw the game over screen. So that was a little... I, that's, that's kind of strange, actually, now that I think about it. But oh well. Uh, the music. And I talked about this with uh, Mr. RPG Crazy. How uh, We're talking about uh, the Tales music. It really kind of seems like, in a, a lot of ways, they're using the same soundtrack for each game. And, you know, with the old Final Fantasies, with uh, Yui Matsu doing the, the music, there was a carryover of sound. Uh, of a vibe, you know, you, you knew what it was, but uh, this in these Tales of games, in a lot of ways, it almost feels like it's the same songs in each game, and I'm not just talking about like a prelude and like a chocobo theme. No, 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 it's like the same exact, um, same exact score. So, I, you know, that's a little bit weird and a little bit uh, unfortunate. And for the most part, when I play these Tales games, uh, there's one or two tracks that really stick out for me, but for the most part, the music is kind of forgettable. Um, it's, it's, it's nothing like a, a Yui Matsu score, where like I could just sit, and I could sit right here now and hum to you the theme, the overworld theme from Final Fantasy VI, you know. But in this game, I, I just got done finishing it, and uh, really, I, I couldn't hum to you any of the themes. I mean, it's very good music, and it's enjoyable while you're playing the game, except for uh, the Mushroom Road, which is a side quest. If you go there, it's really annoying. But um, 
it didn't stick with me after I've you know taken it out of the system. So while you're playing the game, uh, you'll like the music, but you won't rush out to buy the soundtrack. Uh, now I'll probably have a bunch of t uh, Abyss fans being like, "Oh, I have the soundtrack. It's amazing. What are you talking about?" But um, there you go. Uh, what else? Do I think? God, graphics. We always got to talk about the graphics, which. Um, you know, this is a, what is it, about a six-year-old game? Seven-year-old game? 2005, seven-year-old game? <laughs> Time flies, man. Wow. Seven years. But uh, I still think it looks fantastic. Um, you, yeah, it doesn't look as good as, like, Kid Icarus or these other games that are on the 3DS. And, uh, yeah, it's a seven-year-old PS2 game, but it, it still looks really good. And I think they redrew all of the, the, the characters uh, for the 3DS. Let me see here real quick. Let me kind of compare the screenshots. Because I think they had to redraw them to take advantage of the uh, 3D in the system and maybe simplify the models down a little bit for the 3DS. But uh, I, I thought this game looked fantastic. Um, there is a little bit of a pixelation issue. Uh, not pixelation like, you know, NES stuff. But you know how, like, when... Uh, you play these sort of uh, 3D games, and you, you when you run off to the distance, your character gets really blurry. There's kind of that type of thing going on, whereas if I played on the PS2 on my big screen TV, everything would be nice, big, and clear. But uh, for the 3DS game, I, I thought the graphics were fantastic. Um, like I said, the 3D doesn't really add anything to it, but it doesn't detract either. So it's, it's really just your preference. It, you know, Everyone said, oh, the 3D's terrible, the 3D's awful in this. Uh, I found the 3D to be quite good. Uh, I thought maybe the, the the word bubbles popped out a little too far, the farther than they should. But uh, looking at the character models in 3D, I thought it looked I thought it looked just fine. So, you know, now that I'm gonna play Kid Icarus uh, here next. Uh, maybe that will really blow this out of the water in the, the 3D department. But you know, it's a, it's a nice thing. But like, I just turned it off because it was kind of hurting my eyes because I'd play for long sessions. It was eating the battery. And uh, you don't really need it, you know, so. Uh, but anyway, uh, definitely one of the best games on the 3DS right now. Uh, the first true uh, JRPG experience. Uh, I'm really glad I finally got to play this. However, that being said, since I own this, um, and I've owned this for a while, I would have much rather have had, like, uh, Tales of Rebirth, which was a uh, PS2 Tales of game that we didn't get over here in America. I would have rather had that. So I'd have a new experience as opposed to having a game I already own, but I haven't played yet. So, you know, whatever. But um, a lot of the reviewers out there gave it a 7.5, um, which I, I, you know, maybe they're, I don't, I, I don't understand uh, big time reviewers. I, I, I really don't. Because I look at this game, and I play this game, and it's like, they just gave it a 7.5 because it's from 2005. You know, um, I, I just, I don't know. Because to me, this is a this is easily a 9. Uh, I, I love this. But I'm a JRPG nut, so take that as it will. But uh, it's definitely better than a 7.5. Uh, I just, I don't, I don't. I take reviews with a grain of salt. Really, I just uh, go to these websites and read these magazines for the previews, and then I kind of laugh at the reviews when they come out. But uh, I definitely think you guys should check this out, whether it be on the 3DS or on the PS2. PS2 will probably be easier to find and uh, cheaper. But if you definitely want it on the 3DS, it's not a bad way to go. Just be uh, aware that uh, the 3D, you know, you can take it or leave it. The battery life of the 3DS is really what cripples this game. Because you, you want to play for a long time. And uh, the battery just, just won't let you. It's just not there. Uh, but other than that, this is a fantastic game. Definitely go check it out. If you can find it, snatch it up. Because this is probably going to get rare really fast. Unless they do a reprint. So That's all for me right now, guys. Um, like I said, I'm going to start up Kid Icarus here. I figure I can play that relatively quick. Plus, I'll need a game to sort of uh, take a break from Xenoblade, especially when my Wii remote uh, dies on me. D answer a question, guys. Do those Wii remotes always sap energy off the batteries, or is it just when you hit a button? Because it seems like I can put a battery in those, uh, you know, the Wii motes and just set it on the table and let it sit there for a few days, and then I come back and it's dead. So I don't know 
if there's a switch I need to hit or something, I, I don't know. It just seems like it eats through those batteries so fast. Um, but anyway, in two days uh, from the time I'm recording this, I will be playing Xenoblade. So that will be the next sort of big game discussion, although I will most definitely finish uh, Kid Icarus before then. Um, I'm also planning on downloading a game on my PS3, and it's a short game, and I won't mention the title, but uh, I think just saying uh, PS3, short game, download, you guys probably know what it is. And I, uh, I still have the day off tomorrow, so I'm going to be flipping between Kid Icarus and probably going back and playing Bastion on my 360 and trying to get that finished. So maybe I'll have that game discussion up here soon as well. But uh, that's all for me right now. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you're new to my, new to my channel, um, I'm having a hard time talking. Um, if you're new to my channel, please go check out some of my other videos. Uh, see if there's anything there for you. If there is, please subscribe. Please leave comments. Tell me what you guys think of t uh, Tales of the Abyss or JRPGs in general. Uh, you know, I just did a big, uh, a really big, God, that was a long video. I got so tired by the end of it. Uh, a really big um, video uh, response to R.E. Lewis 2011's video about JRPG or just RPGs, but I just focused on JRPGs, and it was also a response to Ball and Nick. So I kind of, I kind of said my piece on RPGs for a while, but um, you know, definitely let me know what you guys think about this genre because it's definitely a genre we need to support. So go get it. Favorite, favorite Tales of game. Gotta play Grace's F still, but uh, still, yeah, there we go. So, alright guys, take it easy, I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.